Dad, you're coming to a big ass weekend, but let's get into something that happens last night with the duels. And as a driver like yourself in the Arca series running on those general tires, when you see Austin Dillon, Bubba Wallace with that dual finish, you as a driver, are you cussing? Are you yelling at the TV? Are you getting up off your seat? Oh, no, look at that class. <laughs> If it was the 43, I definitely would have got up off my seat and started yelling uh, with the affiliation we have with him, you know. But uh, just just watching that is just exciting. You know, I usually stay pretty calm uh, watching races uh, unless we're running up front, unless we're, we got a shot at winning the race. Um, I'll get pretty excited and, and yell at the TV. Uh, I'll try not to cuss. Uh, Grandpa usually gets on to me for that. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's always cool to watch a finish like that, you know, especially – uh, Daytona has been known for its finishes. The clash on uh, Tuesday night was also really, really cool to watch. I was here uh, and watched them go into uh, the final chicane there, coming uh, off of turn four, and uh, that that was just uh, really, really cool to watch. I really thought that Chase was going to make a move, but I didn't think that that he was going to wreck Blaney. Uh, and I mean, it could have gone either way. You know, you, you you could say Blaney went across his nose or. Or maybe Chase got into him a little bit, but they both could have gave a little bit more. But you know, it's Daytona. We're racing um, for wins here, and, and I, nobody's really going to give an inch, especially that close to the checkers. So, with that model, you're saying that when you watch races, you can actually be pretty calm, cool, and collected. I can't do that. So, what does make that model super excited and make you cuss? I'm going to make you cuss. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, like when the 43s up front, I get really, really excited and start yelling at the TV. Uh, I do, I do get excited watching races. It's just I do it for a living, so I think that um, right. being being in that exact situation, I would want to stay calm. Uh, so I know how those guys are feeling going into it. Uh, but I'm an extreme sports junkie. I do uh, like snowboarding and wakeboarding, and water sports, uh, snowmobiling, uh, jet skiing, and all, all that crazy stuff. Um, uh, I want to really jump out of a plane and go snowboarding. I think that'd be cool. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that gets me really, really excited. <laughs> jump out of a plane in a snowboard. Okay, so you like the backwoods kind of skiing. Yeah. 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 That, okay. So is that on your bucket list? Oh, yeah, for sure. What, what about skydiving in general? Um, I, I would do it. I'm Actually, I have a fear of heights. But I like, but I like, but it's mostly like when, like if I'm standing on top of it, like I can fly in a plane all day and not even think about how high up in the air I am. But like if I'm standing on top of the building and I can see over the edge, I feel like the whole building's like leaning over and I'm getting ready to fall off. Um, so it's, it's more of like, like that. And uh, like the slingshot down there at the beach, no way I'm going to do that thing. Oh, right. No way. So, what you're saying, you will never be a spotter sitting atop no. Daytona International Speedway, right? Uh, I went up there one time, and uh, I think I was sweating worse when I got off the spotter stand than I was driving the car. Oh, that's oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Where does that come from? Is that hereditary, or were you thrown off a two-story building early in life? No, so people don't. A lot of people don't uh, know, but my grandpa is really, really scared of heights, too. So most of the time, if I won't do something, he won't do it either. So we just kind of sit back and watch. Come on. Interesting. One of the greatest drivers in the world, your granddad, Richard Petty, is, has, a, has a fear of heights? Yes. Yeah, so so we always – people always make fun of us because we're not afraid to go 200 miles an hour and right. get into the wall and race <laughs> inches apart from cars. But if we're standing on top of a two-story building and we look over the edge, we're both – uh, palm sweating, knees shaking. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> on top of the pit box. Yeah, next time I see him on top of the pit box, I'll say, You okay? You okay? Yeah. Get me down. Yeah. <laughs> but what's fascinating about that to me is that the first thing out of your mouth as to one of the things that would be on your bucket list and make you super excited, maybe even cuss, was snowboarding out of a helicopter or out of a plane. So, is the snowboard your comfort zone there? Kind of like the race car is your comfort zone at the track. Uh, yeah, so I think that, like like I said, like helicopters and, and uh, airplanes and stuff like that, like I'll go up yeah. in the air and, and not even think about it. Uh, now, if you ask me to jump out of one, that's probably where I would 
So, so it'd be one of those deals where we have to fly to the top and then they land and then I get out and put my snowboard on. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Jesus. All right. Ed Moffat, one of those gentle tires in the Arca series, joining us here in the Freak Nation, Lucas Oil Studios. You have seven time champion Jimmy Johnson, uh, your grandfather, Richard Petty. Who's the better driver? Oh, no. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Okay, so so Jimmy, I really respect what he did in his era of racing. Um, I think that Grandpa had a, a, a better all-around uh, career. I mean, winning 200 races is dominant. And, I mean, second place isn't even close. Um, but as a driver, my Grandpa will tell you that he was never the best driver. He was always the best racer, but he was never the best driver. Uh, I think Jimmy is a, is a better driver, and I think Richard is a better racer because he understands during the race and puts things into perspective. I mean, like when he won the 500 here and he was running third, not even in contention for the win, uh, and everybody thought it was over, uh, he had just passed. Um, I can't remember who he had just passed, but he had just passed somebody for third, and he ended up winning the race because um, they were fighting in the infield down in three and four. <laughs> But those are things, though, that that's just racing in general, and it always teaches you to never give up. It, I mean, yes, of course, Daytona and Talladega are slightly different, but at the same time, any track that can happen. I mean, we we saw it even on a road course this past Tuesday. So, yeah, that's those are lessons that are with you forever. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, that he just understands uh, what he needs out of the car. Richard really understood in his era what he needed and where he lacked. Uh, I think... If I could compare it to somebody now, I would say Kyle Busch um, yeah. mm. is really, really good. I think that, that in this era, Kyle Busch is the um, Richard Petty, as you would say, at, at picking apart his car and being able to go back to the garage and uh, say, here's what I need to, to win the race. Can you give it to me or not? You know, uh, Grandpa was, this, was the same way in his era, and uh, I think that's what, what won him so many races. Well, Thad, do yourself a favor. Go out and win some races because we have the ARCA Series winners on every Sunday night after the race. Uh, go win some races so you can we can uh, build on this friendship here. I mean, I like your attitude, bro. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm hoping I get to talk to you all. Well, we got 20 races. I hope I get to talk to you all 20 times this year. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Let's do it. boy. That's, that's the if, goal, man. We're not going to finish second. Uh, well, right. I, think, I, really, I really think we have a good shot this weekend, too. After testing... Uh, you know, we came down here in January and we had preseason tests and we were third the first day and uh, eighth the second day. But but I was really, really happy with how the car drove and uh, we really, really excel in the draft. Um, I can get to almost anybody's bumper I want to. Um, you know, me and me and the 18 ran a lot and me and the 23 ran a lot. And we, we I think me, the 18 and the 23 are the three best cars leaving the test. And uh I guess we'll see here at one o'clock how how well uh, we held up and how much everybody else made gains uh, uh, in between the test and the race. But, but I, I really do believe we have a genuine shot at winning the race down here this weekend. Uh, uh, you know, Daytona's Daytona's Daytona. Uh, the cars have to fall right. Uh, there's a lot of luck and, and right place, right time, and not getting in other people's messes that we're going to have to avoid uh, to get that checkered flag on Saturday. But but I think we do have a genuine shot. Well, well just, just go out there and make us cuss. I want to be cussing at the TV. Go on, man! <laughs> <laughs> Saying bad words. <laughs> most of the time, if I most of the time if I try, uh, if I do in my helmet, I just won't press the mic button. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just yell in my helmet. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, I, the very first time I ever raced Daytona, actually, uh, we qualified outside the front row. Uh, Twenty laps into it, I don't know if you remember, but my window net fell down running fifth. And. Uh, <laughs> So I had to make a green flag stop, and uh, there were some very choice words that I really wanted to say that I just was yelling that I, did, I didn't mic up. Um, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things where, where they they really don't need to hear what I had to say at that point. Uh, oh, I'd be pissed too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Well, I just talked to Forrest Lucas at Lucas Oil, and he said he'd be happy to hand you over that money if, after you win that Lucas Oil 200 at Daytona on Saturday. <laughs> I would gladly accept. <laughs> I gladly accept. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's a there's a lot of family heritage uh, 
just at this track alone, you know, in this sport, there's a lot of family heritage for me, but th this is probably the, the one that you circle the most as a petty. Um, my grandfather won the very first race on the oval, the big oval here, once they moved it from the beach uh, over here. My great grandfather, uh, Lee Petty, won. Um, Kyle won his very first arc race at Daytona. Richard won it seven times. Uh, we've won. Uh, the 43 has, has won multiple races here at Daytona. So, so this is like the biggest uh, deal for, for me and my family, I think. You know, Grandpa really never says what his favorite track is, but we all know it's Daytona. He just won't say it. Um, you know, because it. You can just you can just see them light up when you when you uh, go under the tunnel and, and you come uh, into the track. It's, it's just incredible. You know, we we were talking the other day, um, me and him, and, and the first time that he came down here, he was uh, so amazed that he wrote my uh, grandmother a letter because uh, uh, they didn't have cell phones back then. So he wrote a letter uh, and, and sent it. Uh, I think I think he got home before the letter got home. Uh, <laughs> But, but but he had sent a letter back to grandma about just how phenomenal this place was and he had never seen anything like it before um and and you know the, the this is where i decided i wanted to race you know i was eight years old um and i came down here to daytona and eric had ran really really good in the 500 uh, and me and grandpa were walking to pit road because i was his sidekick when i was little man he didn't go anywhere without me uh, oh. and uh we were walking out to pit road and i was like you mean like this could be me one day? Like, you could be walking out here to pit road to see me after five hundred? It's like yeah, and so I had to bug him about it for a while, you know, um, because Adam, because Adam's accident and everything, um, I had to bug him to to finally get me a car, just give me a shot, you know, see if we can do it. And uh, so we went we went quarter midget racing, and then Grandma got sick uh, with leukemia, so we didn't race for for three years you know grandpa was with her mom was with her in the hospital dad was at the racetrack uh with richard petty motorsports so, so i never really had a shot uh when i was little and then i was 13 and we bought that go-kart and uh we ended up running running some go-kart dirt go-kart races and then uh a year later they gave me a call they were like hey we want you to come drive a stock car oh i was like sweet <laughs> you know like what am i i'm not gonna say no <laughs> so uh, we end up going to Caraway Speedway right close to home um, and I ended up running fourth that day uh, I didn't even know how to drive a straight gear when I showed up for the race um, I'm, I missed a shift every every restart we had uh, and went back and then came back up I could drive the car but I couldn't I couldn't change the gears and uh, so finally I just started starting in fourth gear because <laughs> I <laughs> Because I couldn't get up through the gears, and then we we went. I burned out three clutches uh, this week when I to drive a straight gear, um, and uh, we went on to win uh, the Southeast Limited Late Model Championship that season. So I will say this: we've we've talked to hundreds and hundreds of drivers of our twenty-year term, and talking to you is awesome. You're you're not jaded yet. You open up. You don't open up too much. <laughs> but it's it's good to get the. Uh, He's a young, saying you're perfect. Right, yeah, right. Cool. It's, it's good to get a guy like you head. in here. That's it's, it's <laughs> not afraid to mix it up, buddy. Uh, well, I mean, I, I have watched the best in the sport do it for uh, 20 years now. So uh, the way he interacts with people and the way he carries himself, uh, I mean, if I could if I could do half of what he does uh, as a person, uh, and and I'd be happy to do half of what he did as a driver too. You know, that's a that's right. a heck of a career. Uh, it's a heck of a career for a lot of people right now. Um, but uh, if I could just more so of what I've taken away from him it is what he do, does off the track. You know, the way he interacts with the school janitor, just like he would the CEO of NASCAR. Um, yep. You know, he, he treats everybody uh, so equal. And, and I've watched him sign autographs so long that, that my arms hurt from watching. Um, <laughs> so if I could just be uh, uh, just do half, half of what he does, uh, I think uh, – I'll be I'll be happy with that, Perfect. buddy. Good luck this weekend. Go out there and kick some ass in those general tires and take home that Lucas Oil dough, Okay. I'm gonna try, man. I'm gonna try. Hopefully, I get to talk to you guys on Sunday. Yes. Thank you, Thad. Yep. Thanks for having me. <laughs>